Two-thirds of parents say that the cost of childcare is now the same or more than their rent or mortgage. And one in four parents say that they've had to cut down on necessary expenses such as food, heating, clothing, to afford childcare. Well, those figures are from a survey of almost 27,000 parents of young children carried out by the charity Pregnant then screwed and Mumsnet as well to discuss the impact childcare costs are having on families and providers uh, we have with us Catherine from Derby who's a mother of twins Becky Lorden from Norfolk who's a childminder and uh, Joni Brearley from Pregnant then screwed who led this research and I'll, I'll start with you uh, Joni if I may we know childcare is expensive in this country um, but um, I I take it the problem. I mean, what your all this tends to suggest that it is getting far more expensive. I mean, it, it really is. Analysis by the Labour Party found that childcare costs have increased by one thousand five hundred pounds in the last five years, and it's really disappointing that the government are ignoring this issue because our research has found that more than half of households with an income of under £50,000 are reducing the number of hours that they work, that they want to work more hours, but they can't because of childcare. And Boris Johnson said recently, the only way to dig yourself out of poverty is to work. But because we have this ridiculously extortionate childcare, that really isn't an option for many families, and so it's forcing them into poverty. Were you hoping for something in the spring statement? We were desperately hoping for something in the spring statement. We were hoping for something in the recent levelling up white paper. Um, it was barely mentioned in the government's recent education white paper. And we've been campaigning for an independent review that was backed by 114,000 people. That petition was rejected on International Women's Day. But the only way to achieve levelling up and to tackle the cost of living crisis is to understand that investment in childcare is just that. It it is an investment and the women's budget group found that investing in childcare actually yields more pound for pound than investing in construction that's more jobs higher tax revenues and lower spending on welfare right Let, let's hear directly for, for some parents Catherine um your twins are nearly one I think and you're about to go back to work as a nurse and what options did you look at for childcare Hi, yeah. Um, so we looked at everything from a nursery um, to a nanny to childminders. Um, and because of the hours that I work, I work long shifts. So I work 12 and a half hours, um, 11 and a half of which are paid. The nanny and the childminders, we didn't meet their number of hours um, that they needed as a minimum. And then a nursery didn't cover what we needed. They didn't open early enough. They didn't close late enough. Um, so none of those options were viable for us. Mm. So what what have you done? I think, I mean, you've been able to cover a couple of days with family support, a couple of days a week, but um, uh, is there any way you'd have been able to make it work paying for a nursery? No. Um, so I my wage is there about £13 an hour. The cost for nursery for my two boys would be £11 an hour. Um, and once I've paid for hospital parking, it means I would take home £12 a day. I mean, and the cost of fuel on top of that is just, it, it just wouldn't be worth doing. Mm. Um, and that's if and if we could, uh, we could find one that would facilitate what we needed anyway. So what have, what have you ended up doing? Um, I've actually left. I worked um, in an, the acute part of nursing. I worked um, in respiratory. I've left that because I can't, I can't get any, I can't work shifts that I could get covered. So mm. I've gone into clinic work because that means I can get hours that would suit for my childcare. Mm. Now, the government... I've, sorry, sorry. Make your No, you finish. <laughs> I say, it means that I have a lot of skills that I've left behind um, and that I won't be using anymore, which is essentially a waste of my time and a waste of the people who trained me. Do stay with us and come back to you if we can. The, the government told us they've invested uh, £3.5 billion in each of the last three years to deliver the government's free childcare offers, including the 30 hours per week for working parents, and they say they're investing in family hubs. Jolie, um, the government offers tax-free childcare and free hours which start when children are three, and there's more support if you're a lower-income family. What more would you like to see? 
I mean, the notion that the government are providing enough financial investment into childcare is either completely disingenuous or it shows they really don't understand the scale of the problem. Our data is showing that the cost of childcare is pushing parents out of work and into poverty. On the other side, you have a third of childcare providers saying they are currently operating at a loss. Between January and July 2021, we lost almost 3,000 childcare providers net due to underfunding. So, I mean, the, the, it's just not working. And so we need to see higher investment. As a percentage of GDP, we invest 0.1% of mm. GDP. The average across the OECD is 0.4%. So the problem is a lack of investment. The government needs to invest more in this system if they want mm. more parents to work. Let, let me bring in Becky, uh, Becky Lorden, because you're, you're in the whole business of childcare. Tell us about your role and how many children you care for. Hi, yes, so I'm a childminder and childminders meet all the same standards as a nursery but we work from our own homes. And we can have three under five at a time. Sometimes that goes up to four if you frisk a test, you know the children well already. (laughs) Um, And I think one of the big problems with the affordability of childcare is that the government promote their 15 or 30 hours from when children... Um, are three years old. They they call it a free entitlement, but they actually pay um, nearly up to maybe twenty percent less an hour than the childcare provider would normally charge. Mm. And you're not allowed to charge parents the top up. Um, I think most parents would prefer to pay a pound an hour for their high quality childcare than for the childcare provider to not offer funding at all because it means they're operating at a loss. Mm. Um, uh, the Early Years Alliance say childcare providers who offer the free hours for three and four year olds are underfunded by the government. I take it you'd agree about that? Yeah, it's hugely underfunded. So my, it's paid by the government to the local authority. Local authority pay their childcare providers. So in Norfolk, where I am, it's, I usually charge £5 per hour per child and mm. the local authority pay us four pound eight per funded child. So as soon as children get to age three, we can take a pound drop basically yeah. per hour in our funding level or mm. we can not offer funding at all. There's one issue I, I really want to tackle with you. The Children and Families Minister Will Quince has said he'll look at regulation as a way to reduce costs and that could include increasing the ratio of children to carers. What are your thoughts on that? Um, So I think it's been looked into before and PACE, the the main body for uh, childminders and nannies, they um, did a survey on it and most providers said they were not interested. I mean, if you, four children, if you know them well, that's fine, that's safe, you know you can meet their needs. Five children per hour, it's just not safe, basically, for one person to deal with five children that young, generally. Um, and also, it's not going to drop costs because nobody is going to say, OK, I've got four or five children per hour now, I'll drop my hourly rate. I charge £5 an hour whether I have three or four children here. So that's not going to make any difference. It's just another way of the government shifting the blame onto the riders because they'll say, well, you're choosing not to have five children per hour. Um, and we've seen that before. We've been told, OK, so you need to attend business improvement courses, things like that, in order to raise your income but the issue is they're underpaying everybody okay, okay Jolie one one more thing Will Quince has also said he's going to be looking at child care and how it works in other countries um, how do the ratios compare elsewhere given what uh, what Becky's just told us Uh, The ratios are are pretty similar to what they are in the Nordic countries. Um, In France, they have much higher ratios, more children to parents than we do in the UK. But just to echo the last point made, ratios is not the way to solve this problem. We have a retention and recruitment crisis in the childcare sector because the work is so demanding and it's so badly paid because of underfunding. So if you increase ratios and you don't increase salaries, that retention and recruitment crisis is only going to get more acute so therefore you would have to increase salaries and therefore the cost would not be passed on to parents it's a complete misnomer that this would solve the problem 